Rev up your engines! Today I'm going to talk about fuel filters in your car and what damage can occur if you don't change them and they get clogged up. Now fuel filters of course filter contaminants out of your fuel so they don't mess up with your fuel system and to understand how they work here's a little history lesson. When I was a young mechanic in the 60s all cars had carburetors to make fuel go into the car and most of them had a tiny little brass filter like this that would filter out water and some impurities. You can see it's just a tiny little metal thing that went in the front of the carburetor. Now the first car I ever had was an Opel, yeah a German car, shock you doesn't it? It had such a small gas tank, it was only 10 gallon and it was metal and it was rusting out so I put an inline filter like this to get rid of some of the crud because I didn't have any money to buy a new gas tank. But even though this is a reasonably sized filter, rust sediments are so small Rust kept getting into the carburetor and it got so bad that I would take the carburetor apart all the time to clean the crud that went past the filter and I didn't even have money for a gasket so I used the Kellogg cereal box and I cut the gasket out and I had a bunch of them lying around so I could clean it out, put another gasket in and go down the road. Realize carburetor system, this is an old Volkswagen Beetle carburetor, don't have much pressure. The fuel pump would put out one and a half pounds pressure or so. So dirt could get stuck because there isn't that much pressure pushing it through. But cars have been fuel injected for a long time. They have higher pressure. It can go anywhere from 40 PSI up to the modern GDI engines that can have over 1500 PSI pressure. Now older cars like this 94 Toyota Celica, they had fuel filters externally. Here it is, it's just a big canister, there's a bolt on the top and a threaded rod on the bottom and you replace the fuel filter every 40, 50,000 miles. Now this is a fuel injector, one that goes in that older one and if you look inside, look at those tiny holes, those are the little tiny holes inside where the fuel sprays into the engine. You don't want to clog them up. And many of them have a little screen, just like a tiny mosquito screen on your house window to keep dirt from getting into the injectors. And if any of them get clogged up, your car is going to run poorly. Now if your fuel filter gets clogged up, it can do two main things. One, it can lower the pressure that goes to the fuel injectors. So if they don't have the right amount of pressure, they can't spray the right amount of gas into the engine. And if it's clogged up enough, it can trip a code and turn your check engine light on and when you scan it, it can say engine running too lean. Well it's running too lean because it's got the normal amount of air coming in, unless your air filter's clogged up, but the fuel filter's clogged, can't pump enough fuel through, the pressure's too low, and then the car will run lean. Now eventually running lean can burn out your pistons, make your cooling system overheat and ruin the engine, and it can burn out your catalytic converter by making it run too hot. Now testing for a clogged fuel filter used to be easy in a car. We used to just have pressure gauges, quick install connectors, and on many cars like Fords, GMs, and Chryslers, they had a little Schrader valve, just like the valve on your tire. You would just snap it on and take the pressure to see if there's any pressure problems, like either too low or too high. If the fuel pressure regulator was bad, it was easy to do. But on most modern cars, hey, there's no such valve. In order to check the pressure, you need a kit with all these adapters. It's a royal pain in the butt. Here's some of my adapters. I've got a box that's got three times as many. It's a real pain taking fuel pressure readings in a modern car. Plus, if the fuel filter's clogged up, sometimes there's enough room for the pressure to be high, but the volume is low. So when you're going at higher speeds, it just doesn't have enough volume and you can't go fast. And doing a volume pressure test is another real hassle to do. So basically, you want to make sure your filter's clean. But here's the stinker of it on most modern cars. You can look around all you want under the hood, but you're not going to find a fuel filter because guess what? They've hidden it away. And where have they hidden it? They've hidden it inside the gas tank. Engineers in their questionable wisdom have decided it's more efficient to have the filter right next to the pump inside the gas tank. Well guess what, changing it out has become a gigantic pain in the rear end. Now in the case of this matrix, it's not that big of a deal, it takes less than half an hour to change the filter. You just take out the back seat, there's a little four screw cap that covers over the, where the gas tank is and when you take that cover off, you get inside the gas tank and you can replace the filter assembly. Now Toyota calls it a fuel filter fuel pump assembly and they want $697, but aftermarket you can buy just the filter itself and replace it. But the old saying out of sight out of mind really fits it here, most people don't see it, they don't think about it and they leave it alone. But a clogged fuel filter will cause the pump, this is the tiny little pump that they use in Toyotas, to work too hard then burn out 
then you'll have to replace the $697 pump and filter assembly. So really, you don't want your filter to get clogged up. Now I have to admit, I live in Houston, Texas, a giant city, and all the gas tanks at the gas stations have been dug up and they put in the fiberglass ones that don't rust so you don't get crud in the gasoline from the tanks rusting and then water intruding in the gasoline. So if you have a good supply of fuel, you really don't have to worry about it getting clogged up, but who knows? Sometimes I've seen they made the gas wrong, and then when people pumped it, the car started to die. The filters would clog up. There's all kinds of things that can happen. Water can get in them. You really want to make sure you have a clean filter, especially if you live in an area where the fuel quality is questionable. And if you drive a diesel, it's even more important. Diesel, believe it or not, there's fungus that can grow inside the tank and clog everything up. So you really need a good filter on a diesel and you need to change it a lot. And whatever you do, don't believe that nonsense that a lot of the manufacturers say that, oh, you don't have to change the fuel filter. It's a lifetime fuel filter. Well, what they mean is it's lifetime. If it clogs up and the fuel pump burns out because it's clogged up, then you get to replace that $697 assembly and they make a lot of money selling it to you. Now, you don't need to change the filters in a modern car all that often. Maybe once every four or five years or every 67 70,000 miles, but as you now know, it's a good idea to keep them clean. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.